Hello fellow Anons. I would like to take this time to address the issues surrounding the Federal Reserve Private Centralized Bank. As you are probably already aware the Federal Reserve Transparency Act of 2009 H.R. 1207 was a bill introduced in the U.S. House of Representatives of the 111th United States Congress by Congressman Ron Paul. It proposed a reformed audit of the Federal Reserve System, the Fed, before the end of 2010. The bill had 319 co-sponsors and was referred to the Committee on Financial Services. Its Senate version, introduced by Senator Bernie Sanders, was called the Federal Reserve Sunshine Act of 2009 S-604, and it had 30 to co-sponsors. This bill acts as if it does something to investigate the Federal Reserve, when in fact the bill implicates its legitimacy instead. I will further explain. An entire exposition on the Federal Reserve System can be acquired by the late Eustace Mullins' nephew. The exposition is entitled, Secrets of the Federal Reserve. G. Edward Griffin released a similar copy known as The Creature from Jekyll Island which was really nothing more than a plagiarized copy of the same book that Eustace Mullins released, except it supported the gold standard in which Eustace Mullins never endorsed. Eustace Mullins released an interview on Jen Irvin's Gnostic Media Radio in 2009 exposing the plot by Ron Paul and G. Edward Griffin to use his book that was written 50 years prior to support the gold standard. A myth surrounding the Federal Reserve is that all centralized banks are bad for economies when in fact this is simple disinformation. It was the economist Milton Friedman who discovered that centralized banks are actually good for economies. The only issue of the Federal Reserve private bank is that it is privately controlled. Many presidents throughout U.S. history have given the people warnings about private banks including Thomas Jefferson, Andrew Jackson, Abraham Lincoln, James Garfield, and John F. Kennedy. The point of this video is to brief you on where to get the information exposing this disinformation and to make a few adjustments about your information concerning the Federal Reserve System. Not very many people are aware that the United States can be totally out of debt within six weeks. The $16 trillion national debt and counting can be resolved by the people in just a short period of time with this key information. While the Federal Reserve Act was being slated for legislation, the majority of senators who did not approve the bill wrote into it a section that allowed Congress to repeal the act and buy back the stock that sold in it. This was known as Section 34. If you go to look for this section in most public places you will not find that it exists. This was purposeful to hide the fact that Congress has the ability to do something about the legislation from the people. The people of the United States, could propose to Congress to implement Section 34 of the Act to buy back the stock in the Federal Reserve which sold from the years of 1913 to 1914. A total of $145 million worth of stock sold in between these years and the majority of the stock belongs to then John D. Rockefeller, whose assets are being controlled by Dave Rockefeller and his family. The lineage can be traced back to the Caesars of Rome. This act was opposed by men such as the three wealthiest men at the time including Benjamin Guggenheim, Isador Strauss, the head of Mesa's department stores, and John Jacob Astor IV who would have shut the legislation down with their power and influence. A conspiracy by the Rothschilds, Vatican, Black nobility and J.P. Morgan to remove this opposition to the Federal Reserve was contrived. It was the creation of a boat named the Titanic, which was meant to lure these opposers of this legislation aboard a luxurious boat ride on an unsinkable ship. National Geographic did an exposition on the Titanic in 1986 called The Secrets of the Titanic. This documentary named a Jesuit priest named Father Francis Brown who was linked to this ship's sinking, last seen speaking to the captain of the boat about his duties to destroy the boat. Anons need to unite together and pass this video around to get the word out that the US can be freed from the chains of debt slavery once and for all. This can happen as well with all countries who have private banks controlling their currency, 
if they so chose to be free from international banker control. The plan is as follows. 1. Propose to Congress to repeal the Federal Reserve Act of 1913. This process cannot be done by voting congressmen in or out as the voting system has been completely hijacked by the bankers, lobbyists, and bureaucrats. An expose of the voting system was done by James Collier and Kenneth Collier and that book was entitled, Vote Scam, The Stealing of America's Elections. Another documentary was released about this entitled, Murder, Spies and Voting Lies, the Clint Curtis story that also tells of the fraudulent election system. Anyway, this step of the process will probably have to be enforced another way besides the vote. 2. Buy back the stock in the Federal Reserve in the amount of $145 million. 3. Appropriate that stock to remove the entire debt of $16 trillion and counting. 4. Remove the system of the government borrowing money by means of interest who has the ability to create its own money interest free. Research Congressman Wright Patman and Louis McFadden. 5. Back the currency with something other than what is controlled by these international bankers. It was noted in the banking and currency hearings of 1913, that the international bankers, or those who also controlled the private bank of England also, control the volume of gold. Backing this currency should be done with something like free energy from the vacuum currently patented by John Bedini and Tom Bearden, I would think. This worked extremely nicely for the American people under Richard Nixon when he took the US off the gold standard and instead backed their currency with oil. The US would have not survived as long as it has without this ingenious move. Also, Energy from the vacuum is not a resource that anyone can conquer and take away unlike oil, making it a more stable backing solution than oil. I will now quote a president concerning monetary policy. Whoever controls the volume of money in our country is absolute master of all industry and commerce. When you realize that the entire system is very easily controlled, one way or another, by a few powerful men at the top. You will not have to be told how periods of inflation and depression originate. James Garfield, 20th president who was assassinated two weeks after this statement in 1881. To put it simply, an audit of the Federal Reserve does nothing to hinder what the Federal Reserve is doing and actually tells the people that it is a legal system which is the biggest fucking load of bullshit some of us have ever heard. The Federal Reserve unmistakably is a criminally ran syndicate whose power needs to be removed and restored back to the people of the United States of America. No one audits the Mafia or a criminally ran syndicate, because they know already that it is operating illegally. As Eustace Mullins stated in his interview with Jen Irvin, the bankers are attempting to use the Patriot movement to end their bank. Why you ask would the bankers want to end their own bank? The reason this is, is because they have printed so much money out of it, that they can no longer collect any interest on the money they print. They also know that, killing the bank, will totally destroy the economy of the United States. Eustace Mullins also went into detail about this on Gnostic Media Radio with Jen Irvin. So they want to remove the bank and bring in an all new private bank with an all-new private currency using what they control the volume of to back its currency. That is right gold and silver. As we all know the President John F. Kennedy attempted to put an end to this bank during his first term in office, and was murdered by many but mostly by the CIA who is controlled by the Vatican's Jesuits shortly after. His Executive Order 11110, issued silver certificates and bonds out of the U.S. Treasury. Mr. Kennedy knew there was no U.S. Treasury as the U.S. Treasury is really nothing more than an empty building on 4th Street in Washington, D.C., and so this money was to come from the stash of the international bankers who had been slowly and subtly housing the people's looted gold and silver at the Bank of England as well as the Vatican Bank and other branches of their smaller private banks. This information can be acquired from the United States Library of Congress, as well as the Internet. 
these criminals are attempting to control information such as this, and has come out with bills such as SOPA, ACTA, and CISPA, all which take away the rights of the people to information as well as creativity. In closing, I would like to share with you this final statement. At any time the people can declare what these bankers have is worthless. Their wealth can sprout wings and fly away overnight. The only worth gold has, is the worth people believe it to have. You give credit to what you deem to be of value. I will close with another quote from a key figure in the foundation of the United States of America. When the people find that they can vote themselves money, that will herald the end of the republic. Benjamin Franklin. Your right to vote will not be left up to those who think you should not have it. We are anonymous, we are legion, we do not forgive, we do not forget, expect us.